What's going on guys? I'm Jody, this is Inspire Woodcraft, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about feather boards. So I have a whole range of feather boards here. I have all the way from a not that great homemade, shop made version, all the way up to a few that are probably considered premium or high end. And of course they all come at different price points. Now I don't have everything that's available on the market, of course, or else this video would take days to shoot. But of the ones that I do have, we're gonna go through the pros and cons of each one. A few of them have some feature sets that might be really valuable to you. So I urge you to watch through the whole thing and take a look at all of them. Now, of course, I'll have everything here, including the hardware packets and everything that I'm using today linked in the description below this video, in case you guys wanna go check it out, get some more information or check out prices and compare. Now, first and foremost, what is a feather board? I like to think of a feather board as basically something to replace my left hand. Now, typically when I'm cutting on the table saw, probably 99% of the time, this is how I would cut. I would get set up just like this. I would have my left hand applying pressure not only to the fence, but down as well. I'd kind of keep it here and I would feed the material through here like so. Now, there poses a couple problems with this. One, let's say that this used to be a rough board and I've already jointed one face and one edge. I've run it through the planer. The next step would be to rip this edge off to make it match the other side. If this is all rough through here and I'm bringing it with my hand here, I'm applying force to this and any of this rough stuff, say there's splinters or slivers that are sticking up in it, run risk of gouging into my finger and when you're ripping a lot of stock, stock, that really starts to take its toll. The other thing is user fatigue. One or two cuts, it's not gonna matter, but when you're running a lot of material at a time, you start to get more fatigue because you're using more strength to keep that board perfectly in place. Now the other way, the other place that that can be a problem is on long stock. Now this is where I think it's super helpful because if I have this long piece here that I'm trying to run through, I have a lot of tail out here. So I either need to put a roller stand or something underneath there to support this and then I can get up here and do what I need to do or a feather board because a feather board will help keep it towards the fence while I push and run it through here. Now, basically a feather board is simply just a block of wood or a piece of plastic that has got some grooves cut in it here and you end up with these finger looking deals, kind of looks like a feather. And that's just gonna simply be put against here, put a little pressure on there and then tightened up. And that's gonna allow us to pass our wood through here. But as these flex, they're going to put pressure on here. And I'll show you guys more what that looks like a little bit better here in just a minute. Now, one thing to note though, is the placement of where that feather board goes. We don't want our feather board up near the blade. So I'm gonna show you guys sort of an example. If I was gonna set this up, I would first determine my blade height because that's gonna mean the difference on whether or not where I can put that feather board. So now that I have my blade height and I have it set to where I wanna set it at, this is the cut that I wanna make, then I'm gonna bring my feather board, not up into here, but back, maybe an inch before it's going to make the cut, before it's gonna clear the cut. So if I had it right here, I would put pressure on my feather board right here. I would tighten this down and now I would be ready to make my cut. If you don't, if let's say, you guys gotta use your imagination on this one. If I have my feather board up here, as I rip this, what's gonna happen, because remember these flexible fingers are always putting pressure on this outer edge once I get to here where it's made its final pass, and these are two separate pieces, this I can push all the way through here, no problem. But my feather board is now pushing this edge into my saw blade and creating a pinch point. Obviously, we don't want that. Now the quickest, easiest, cheapest way to get a feather board is actually just to make one yourself. I have a really bad copy here. This is something I kind of just threw together um, right before filming this video and I don't think I've ever actually made one. So that being said, this is sort of a poor design. And the reason is, is because this is loose here. If this is where I want to set this thing at. Um, the way I have to apply pressure to this in order to get these fingers to flex, I have to put a lot of my weight pulling back on it like this. And hopefully you guys are going to be able to see that on the camera, it's just not easy. It works, it's just not easy. 
Now the beauty of a shop made feather board is it's basically free. In fact, you literally have to spend zero money on it whatsoever. Now I chose on this one to get a jig and fixture set. This has uh, little miter bars in it and screws and knobs and washers so that I can use it like this. But if you didn't want to spend the money on that or if you didn't have the right parts and pieces laying around, you could make this in any size, any shape that you wanted because you're using material you have already and you could clamp it to your table or the table of your bandsaw or to the router table. So you can make it any width, any length, any size that you need it to be to fit your needs. And you could make it out of just about anything. I've seen people make them out of MDF. I've seen people make them out of plywood. I've never used feather boards made out of those materials. But if you pick a solid wood that has a nice straight grain to it, that's probably gonna be your best bet so that you run uh, a greater chance of not breaking off those little fingers as you go. Now the downside I feel to a shop made feather board is different species of wood have different properties and different tendencies and how they behave, if that makes any sense. So if you make it out of a wood that doesn't have a lot of spring to it, like this piece of poplar here, you're gonna have a hard time pushing back on this thing and getting those fingers to flex. So there's a bit of engineering that almost goes into each one. Now one could say I'm overthinking it, that they've been making feather boards for a long time out of all kinds of stuff and it's worked just fine. And if that's the case, that's pretty awesome. But what I've found out is depending on what you make it out of, you kind of get different results. Now here I have a really inexpensive plastic feather board. Some of you guys might notice right away, it's a little small for the task that we're doing right here. These ones are smaller, they're more intended for the router table. You put some on the base of your table, you put some at the router table fence itself, and that will apply not only force towards the fence, but force down onto the table, keeping your material down where that cutter head is. Now it will work in a situation like this, but you're obviously very limited to how deep you can go with this feather board. Now these fingers here are really soft. They're very springy. There's not a lot of pressure coming back. So I thought it would be good to show you this because then you can actually see what those feathers are doing as we go that's providing that equal pressure up against the fence there. Now, this particular model is an inexpensive one. Like I say, it just comes with these knobs and these two bolts, probably more suited for the router table. But this is a really good example of what you're gonna find in some of the cheaper sets of the larger feather boards that are made for table saws as well. And if you are gonna go that route, I highly encourage you to look at the hardware kit that comes with it to make sure that you're not getting a whole bunch of extra stuff you can't even use for your saw, but you are getting the right amount of parts and pieces. Now what I have here is the Feather Pro by Bow Products. And I think out of everything we have here, although there is some stuff coming that has a pretty strong feature set, this is the best bang for your buck hands down as far as a feather board goes. Now some of you watching this may already have the Feather Pro or the Feather Pro, Pro Duo uh, and wonder why I have this on the list and why I think it's so good. This is actually the updated version. This has just come out. This has a one piece miter bar. Uh, some of you guys might remember the old ones had sort of a system like this. It was two pieces. And so it could be sort of a pain to get in there. And as I've talked about a million times, if something's easy, we tend to use it. This has one miter bar and it actually works really slick. There's a simple T-bolt that goes in to that little spot there and as soon as the handle, which by the way, the handles are much bigger than the old ones, it simply expands and contracts. It works very easy. In fact, it works so well, you just drop it in there, simple quarter turn and you're good to go. It's really that simple. And quarter turn and it's off. You could switch it to another machine, you can be done with it, whatever you wanna do. But again, when something's easy, we tend to use it. What I really like about these is that if you did happen to wear out these fingers, if you were to cut them, they come out. I can replace that. Not only can I replace it, but I can turn it around, put it back in there, and now I can use it on my bandsaw, because on my bandsaw, the blade is on the other side. That means I can also use it in the other miter slot over here on this side of my fence, so I can use this on either way. And it was that simple. 
Now, if you guys will notice, these are actually made out of foam, not hard plastic like that other one. So there's a few things that is going on here. One, when I use this, I feel like it's conforming more to the side of this. Now, I realize that this is a straight edge here. It's a piece of plywood. But if this was a round stock, or if this even had a bull nose or something on it, this would be able to conform more around the edge here and sort of adapt itself to the contour of that edge. The other thing is, is because it's foam, it's non-marring. So in an, the event that you have a very delicate piece, a very soft piece, the harder plastic featherboards could potentially mar that edge. With this, of course, you're not going to have any problems with that. And you can see it's interesting cutout and design here. So what this is for is it's intended to move forward, obviously. But then you see this little relief cut back here. See, that really has nothing to do with the fact when I come, come this way, it's when I pull back, that one goes into the other one, which is really good because that means as they go forward, they don't wanna go back. As you can see, I'm moving my saw because it's not leveled out right here. So this actually is sort of contradictive of what I said before, is that feather boards are not intended to be used as an anti-kickback device. Typical ones, that's correct. This is the only one that I know of that is actually intended to stop or help prevent a kickback. So I can run this through here all day long. There's a little more tension on it than there would be if I had nothing, but it's no big deal. But the minute that I try and pull back on this, those lock back down like that and it won't let it go anywhere. Really slick design and like I said, I think my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck. Now, there's another one, and that's called the Featherboard Duo. And essentially, we have two of them. You might notice that there's a different color here. That's because these are cut a little bit different. You'll see the neck here is quite a bit wider than the neck here, and there's a little bit different um, cut here, this relief on the anti-kickback part. These are more delicate, they're softer almost, not by touch, but just their springiness alone, because you're meant to use them both at the same time. So, if I had this piece here, and I wanted to raise my blade up, and I wanted to run a groove at the bottom of this, just like this, those of you that have done that before know that sometimes you can get a little tipsy here, not if it's short, like it's the height or a little bit above the height of your fence. But when you get taller pieces out here, it's easy to get some weight out here and rock this around. I can set this here. I can make sure that this is loosened up. And all I have to do is push on both of them and I can apply a little bit more pressure on these ones. And now, easy. But what I don't have is I don't have that rocking around back and forth because these are keeping it locked in tight against the top and the bottom of the fence. And just like before, it's really difficult to pull that back out here. Essentially, the Feather Pro, Feather Pro Duo is two of these stacked together. And in the kit comes all the correct hardware for you to use both of these separately if you want it. So you could use one here, use one at the bandsaw, or whatever you might want to do. But it also comes with those risers so that you can use it together. So if you do a lot of resawing, if you do a lot of running grooves on plywood, I guess, this would be definitely the way to go. Now, you could use this at the router table as well. But one interesting thing that I found out is that these T-bolts do not work well with the saw stop fence. I was able to fit this in a regular piece of T-Track, so that might be something that you might be interested in. Depends on what you need. Because if you were to only use the T-Bolt itself, you could just slide that T-Bolt right into any T-Track and use it on top of your router table, just like we talked about with the smaller ones. Now the next two items on the list are also upgrades from things that were previously made. Some of you guys may recognize this. This is a switchable magnet from a company called MagSwitch. Turn it on and it can't be lifted up. Now of course they come in different sizes so they come in different strengths. My issue with MagSwitch is the fact that when you turn it on it has incredible pull strength but it slides around way too easy and I don't like that. 
turn it off, comes right back off. The idea itself is genius, but I never really got on the MagSwitch bandwagon because I didn't like the fact that they slid around. These are very popular for people to make jigs out of. To get around the sliding issue, people would put something underneath there. I've seen some people use sandpaper. I've seen people use some sort of a Velcro tape type of situation. Um, I myself have actually wrapped this into a uh, latex glove, set it down on the table, and then locked it down, and it doesn't move at all. So it just needs something grippy in there to fix that. The new system that they've come up with has fixed that. So on both of these new products, we have these gaskets on either side of the magnet, and the magnet has a little bit better surface area. So that means that when you push down on it and turn it on, it no longer moves around like the old ones used to. Again, the old ones, it was very easy to move them around. That also means because of the wider surface area, if I needed to be in here somewhere, the old ones would be even more slippery above the miter slot because they didn't have enough coverage to get the metal on both sides of that. With this one, no problem. I'm able to run that through just fine, and this stays exactly where it's supposed to go. Now, the beauty of this, of course, is that it has magnets that you can turn on and off, and pretty much anything with a magnet is super cool in my book. The issue is this might not work for you if you have a tabletop that is not cast iron. If you have an aluminum top like my old saw, well, then you're not gonna be able to use these anyways. Now, just like the Feather Pro has the feathers where you can swap them back and forth depending on which direction you wanna go, this would work the same exact way, only with this, we either mount it here or we mount it here. And now I'm able to pass something through there. So I can take this from here, use it, and then pick it up and bring it over to my table here and use it just the same and I don't have to worry about swapping anything out. So that's kind of nice. And like I say, with those gaskets there and it stops sliding, huge bonus on this. However, there's one feature right here that really sets this thing apart. Now, I've shown you guys before how I make small cross cuts on the table saw before. Essentially what I'll do is, let's say that this is the size of cut that I wanna make and I wanna cut this board into a bunch of pieces. I can simply put this up against the saw like this, put a piece of double side tape on a small scrap, lift this up while holding this in place and tape that down to the table. Now I have, as long as this is stuck here, I can make that cut, I can keep going. And with it stuck to the table, it works just fine. Now the only issue with this is there's no adjustability. So I have to make sure that I have this dialed 100% perfect before I tape that down. Otherwise it works perfect. What I like about this, is let's say that that's how deep my cut needs to be. That's it, it's done. And if I need, I can adjust this, make it a little bit longer. But, but as I go, because of those gaskets in there, this thing doesn't slip around and won't knock that back. I've tried it with the regular magnets before, but the more cuts I make, the more that thing scoots over, which means each one of my cuts are not the right distance anymore. Now the other cool part is, let's say I need to make a dado or a groove here. I can set one measurement here, make my cut, then I can push it in here, make my cut, and the difference between the two is the difference in those two saw blades, those two cuts, and now I can go and clean out the rest, and I have that repeatable over and over and over again. So I think that this is not only a good feather board, but I think the feature set that it has in it is extremely, extremely useful, and I do see myself using this a lot down the road. I also see myself getting use out of the vertical feather board from MagSwitch. This has a switch mold magnet on the back, just like the other one, and then the feather adjusts up and down depending on the thickness of stock. And this is gonna work really good for thin stock, especially because it can get a little bit wavy, but in this situation, we could actually put it directly above the blade for a non-through cut so that we make sure we get the exact depth that we're looking for throughout the entire cut because there's nothing worse than making a groove on something and having it be wavy on the inside because we didn't have that vertical pressure. So this I definitely see as being a winning combination. Now, I know this was a long video and I kind of apologize because I wanted to make sure there was enough information in here for people with very little to no experience 
all the way up to people that are just looking to get that extra edge in their shop. And I'm gonna stand by what I said before. I think the Feather Pro is the best bang for your buck as far as a regular Feather board. The mag switch stuff with the updates is well worth the money, I believe, but not everybody needs the features necessarily that they have. If you do need those features, I now can say, yes, I do recommend the mag switch stuff. With the older stuff, like I said, I was on the fence. But for as far as a regular feather board, this is great. Like I said, removable foam feathers. I can use this in all my sheens very quickly across the board. I don't even have to worry about whether I have a cast iron top or not, like with the magnets. And honestly, Part of my decision comes down to price. This is still in a better price point than the MagSwitch stuff. You are paying sort of a premium price for that stuff. Like I said, all the links are down in the description. If you guys made it to the end of this video, I sincerely appreciate the time you took to watch this. I know it was a long one. That's all I got for you guys. If you have questions, leave them down in the comment section. I'll try and keep an eye on it. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, we'll see you in the next one.